There is a Hololive fighting game. There is a Hololive fighting game. There is a Hololive... This is Idol Showdown, a free-to-play fighting game based on the talents and personalities of Hololive, created by Besto Game Studio. Now, normally on New Challenger, I like to highlight indie fighting games that bring something new or unique to the genre. Crazy mechanics, game modes, control methods, stuff like that. Idol Showdown isn't really doing anything revolutionary in terms of fighting games. I'm just here to talk about it because I want to gush about Hololive. But I can't rightly assume that everyone watching this video has the exact same subculture knowledge that I have. And I also know that there's going to be a bunch of FGC dudes going into this who have no idea what the heck any of this VTuber stuff is. So, being the hopeless Hololive fan that I've become, I'll explain it the best I can. I apologize in advance if this video ends up being 80% history lesson about VTubers and 20% fighting games. You've been warned. Hololive is a popular VTuber agency based in Japan who, at the time of this recording, has talent stables hailing from Japan, North America, and Indonesia. A Hololive VTuber assumes the role of a character that they portray during live streams on YouTube where they play games, sing karaoke, draw, or generally do whatever they feel like sharing. It's a little difficult to describe Hololive members as characters because they are being portrayed by real people, and the nature of these live streams means that the lines between a streamer's kayfabe and their real personality can sometimes get a bit blurred. I would rather cut my dick off and throw it into the telegraph. <laughs> Not interested. Each character has a written biography that provides a rough outline of who they are, but the rest of their personality is often informed by personality quirks of the streamer themselves. Some streamers fit their characters to a T, like the dog girl Inugami Korone, who just happens to have the playfulness, energy, and curiosity of a dog. Water in the fire, why? But other times you'll have streamers who contradict or outright defy their written characteristics. For instance, bunny girl Usada Pekora is written to be demure and shy with a low self-esteem. The actual Pekora turned out to be chaotic and mischievous, with a propensity for playing pranks, building death machines, and gloating over her friends. It's this kind of unpredictable nature that makes Hololive's VTubers so entertaining and memorable and what creates the blueprints for how Hololive's members are referenced and recreated in the myriad of fan games starring them. The platform shooter Nui Nui Quest, the Council Risk RPG, and of course, the terrifyingly addictive Vampire Survivor's homage, Holocure. Which takes us back to Idol Showdown. It should stand as no surprise that this game's biggest strength is in its references and representation of Hololive's cast but that wouldn't really mean much if the game wasn't also good, which I'm glad to report that it is. Simple Gatlings, easy inputs, and nigh overpowered assists are all there to give fun options for newcomers, while more advanced techniques like super chat cancels and advanced inputs provide a higher ceiling for mastery and depth. And protective systems like bursts and soft loot prevention keep the game from getting too kusoge. The inclusion of stuff like easy inputs might raise that old question about accessibility in fighting games and player expression or whatever, but this is not the game to discuss that. This is the game where I get to summon Sakura Miko and she drops a bucket of lava like that time she set her Minecraft house on fire. No, this game was made for me. The weirdo who sees a character's kit and intended gameplay and says, that's a reference. Shichiro Botan, my personal Oshi, lends herself naturally to being a gun-based zoner because of her downright insane skill at shooter games, but she also has this shopping cart move because of her obsession with Trials Rising, where she attempts to clear every stage with the shopping cart. Hoshimachi Suisei is a pressure character with terrifying frame traps and resets because of a surprising murderous streak whenever she gets a chance to kill her friends in a video game. Veteran idol Tokino Sora, the very first Hololive VTuber, is shown the utmost respect by all of her peers, which is also why you have to respect her at neutral, or else you get blown up by delayed explosion projectiles or her extremely oppressive command normals. Every single piece of these characters' kits, Aki Rosenthal's belly dancing, Kubuki's gacha mechanic, even Korone's ex-potato, is a reference to each of these girls' talents, traits, or an iconic moment from a livestream. 
even more of these micro details and references can be found elsewhere, with the assist characters, stages, and all over the place in the single-player roguelike mode Virtual Frontier, which features cameos from non-playable characters and a gigantic catalog of items referencing other talents and iconic streams. Also, Virtual Frontier is really fun and also really challenging. I mean, hey look, single-player content in a free-to-play game. In the short time that Idol Showdown has been out, several Hololife streamers are already enamored with it, even going so far as to volunteer their voices for it. The game got an update no less than 24 hours after its release, adding new voices for Botan that she herself recorded and requested on the stream that she played it. But if I'm allowed to be a bit poetic, I personally think there's one homage among many that's important to distinguish. And this is the inclusion of Idol Showdown's eighth and final base roster character, Hololive 4th Generation's Kiryu Koko, the legendary dragon of Hololive. I cannot stress how important Koko is, not just to the global success of Hololive, but to the entire sphere of VTubers that exist today. While Hololive has been active since as early as 2017, it wouldn't really find its global market until 2020, while society was experiencing an embarrassing little thing called COVID-19, confining most of us indoors with nothing better to do except watch a bunch of anime girls play video games on stream. By this time, Coco was among the fourth generation of VTubers to debut from Hololive, and the 24th talent under their Japanese branch. At the time, Hololive's popularity was limited to Japanese viewership, but Coco held a particularly powerful advantage. She could speak fluent English. Good morning, motherfuckers. Combined with her explosive personality, raucous antics, and daringness to challenge what was acceptable behavior for a VTuber, Coco suddenly found popularity among overseas viewers. The words Good morning, motherfuckers built the bridge that brought Hololive onto the global stage. But more than that, Coco was a leader and a pillar for both the fan community as well as her fellow Hololive talents. She had a gag morning show called Asa Coco Live where she would share news and updates about other Hololive members, her own version of meme reviews where she'd invite members to come have a laugh about memes that the community submits to her, as well as invite other members to play games with her and form a collective community between generations. When you watched Coco stream, you were also encouraged to explore the rest of Hololive's many talented streamers. When she started playing Ark Survival Evolved, nearly everyone joined in with her, pulling their resources to create a functional in-game society. Coincidentally, Coco's Ark adventures also resulted in an explosive player growth for the game, which was struggling at the time. But perhaps most importantly, Coco dared to challenge the very notion of idol culture. The topic of the Asian idol industry is far too much to cover in this video, so unfortunately you're only going to get my extremely amateur abridged version. There's a sort of stigma that comes attached to the idol industry. The concept of say-so, or purity. Japanese idols are made to maintain the illusion that they are pure and flawless. They don't do drugs, or engage with anyone sexually or romantically, and have to otherwise appear to the public as though they are sinless angels. The cost of crossing this line results in studios having to take corrective action, forcing public apologies, humiliation, or even compromising their entire careers. Not just studios, but fans as well have been conditioned to abandon and abuse idols who dare to do something as atrocious as touching a man's hand, developing their own twisted form of cancel culture and normalizing the notion that it's within a fan's power to destroy the idols they're supposed to love. These restrictions don't necessarily transfer over to VTubers. The nature of studio-based career streaming has maintained a lot of these stigmas and VTubers often find themselves under pressure from their own fans whenever they've unwillingly stepped on one of these landmines. Coco, meanwhile, was outspoken and fearless. She dropped F-bombs whenever she pleased, she joked about drugs, she taught all sorts of English profanities to her friends, and despite getting demonetized a few times, nothing could ever keep her down. This rebellious attitude, alongside her obsession with the Yakuza games, saw her entire character transform from a curious dragon girl into the fourth chairman of the Kiryu clan. A trash-talking, no-nonsense Yakuza who sells drugs on the side. And the best part was that rather than reprimanding her and forcing her to correct her behavior, 
Hololive decided to lean into this image and make it part of her branding. This freedom of expression was infectious, and the more Coco got away with her unhinged antics, other Hololive members followed suit and found the courage to unhinge themselves as well. Among her peers, she was a leader and an inspiration. Among her fans, she was an icon, and everyone called her by the nickname Kaicho, or Chairman. It was Coco's influence that paved the way for Hololive English, and as of today, Hololive now has two generations of English talent, three generations of Indonesian talent, and two generations of Holostars English, their male VTuber branch. Sadly, things were not meant to last. In mid-2021, for reasons unstated, Kiryu Koko graduated from Hololive, but her channel and archive streams still remain online and her merchandise is still available. Suffice to say that Kiryu Koko is nothing short of a legend, and fan works like Idol Showdown immortalize these memories for generations to come. The future of Idol Showdown promises to be even more exciting, as there are three more characters planned for post-launch. An early teaser basically hinted at the next character being Usada Pekora, and if I had to put in my personal guess, the next two characters after her might be Generation 1's Hachima, the idol formerly known as Akai Hato, and Hololive Myth's Kalaipi Mori, based on a few of the extra music tracks currently in the game. Idol Showdown is available now on Steam and is free to play with a rollback netcode, so if you're someone very specifically like me who loves both fighting games and Hololive, you owe it to yourself to check this game out and explore everything it's got to offer. That's all for today's new challenger. Be sure to give this video a like and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content from Sugar Punch. Our content is supported on Patreon, so be sure to check it out for early access to our latest videos as well as access to exclusive polls. I'm ABI, and I'll see you next stream. Don't don't take that seriously. I don't stream. Like I I just I don't.